like some people didn't like that also they, they you know they thought that we spammed everyone's news feeds with clickbait titles but like no it's honestly it's we we knew what type of titles people would click on and 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 we wanted people to click on the articles and share them uh, and at the end of the day if people hated it we wouldn't be one of the biggest sites in montreal right? <laughs> Chris Cabella and welcome to Media Gentlemen. Today I have the absolute pleasure to sit down with Charles Lapointe, better known as Chuck. Thanks for having us. Thank you, Chris. So for the few people that don't know about Nice City Media, can you tell us a little bit about what is it exactly that you guys do? Yeah, so uh, Nice City Media uh, is an agency media company that owns and operates two sites, okay. mtlblog.com and narcity.com. Uh, most of uh, you guys obviously know mtlblog.com. We launched in 2012 here in Montreal. Uh, and then narcity.com is our global brand that we launched in Toronto in 2014. So Narcity Media is the entity that owns both sites. We do uh, campaigns for clients. Uh, we do uh, advertising uh, management for both sites. Uh, we also take care of all the HR uh, and all that, all that stuff that operates uh, Narcity and uh, MTL Block. Okay, and what was the, the thought process behind creating those two entities? Uh, so MTL Blog, I mean, we started, uh, we started with like nightlife uh, photography, mostly going to events. Uh, we started the brand, honestly, because we were just like two guys that were broke uh, <laughs> and we wanted to have access to cool events for free. Wow. Uh, so yeah, so it was mostly like, okay, let's, uh, so my partner is uh, a photographer. What's his uh, name? Joshua McRae. Okay. Uh, so he was the one who would go out to the events, to the parties, uh, stay up until like 3 like a.m. to take photos uh, of all the partiers in uh, Montreal. So we would go to many events, at least like one or two per night. Okay. Um, and then we would pass out a little cards uh, to people and then tell them to like us on uh, Facebook. Uh, so that was interesting. And then from there, we, uh, we evolved into a English content, uh, platform where we just started creating content, uh, in English to appeal mostly to English students in, uh, Montreal. So McGill, Concordia, Dawson, uh, cause there was no, there, there was nothing that, that was really like connecting with a young audience here in Montreal from that? an English standpoint. Uh, 2013, we started creating, uh, more content. Uh, and then that's when we started doing lists also. Um, and then, and then, and then MTL blog after a while, we're, we're just like, okay, like we're going to be stuck in Montreal with this brand just because of the name. So it's like for us, like we needed to evolve to a, you know, to a different brand. So that's where we got, uh, the idea for Narcity and Narcity stands for we're narcissistic for your city. Wow. Uh, Never knew that. Yeah, no, exactly. It's not, it's not out there uh, yet. Like uh, we're working on a about us page uh, to be able, you know, to clearly define the vision and the mission of the brand. But um, so, yeah, uh, we think that that people aren't proud enough of their cities and we want to showcase that from a content uh, standpoint. So we want them to really like, like you should be proud even if you come from Winnipeg, like there's cool stuff to do there. Uh, and when you're a tourist that travels there, or even if you're just a local, like we want to showcase that and showcase the best of the city. Do you feel like that was something missing uh, in the publishing and media media companies uh, here in Canada? Yeah. So I think I mean I think the uh, the media landscape in Canada is is, is pretty uh, it's pretty fragmented in the sense that like uh, there's no like it's always been post media that's always like sort of dominated you know the market from a more journalistic uh, reporting uh, standpoint uh, online uh, however they've their content i feel doesn't really appeal to millennials to, yeah exactly to the 18 to 34 demo uh, so uh, honestly it's like we don't have much competition in canada to be honest uh, there's a lot of competition here in montreal like uh, for example we had nightlife.ca uh, we have urbania uh, so it, do you it guys was, just all hate each other's or no no I'm, oh i mean 
I mean, yeah, I can't, <laughs> uh, I can't really talk about that. But uh, for me, it's like, uh, I don't think that there's any hate. I think it's just like, I think we've just evolved a bit faster. Uh, and w like, I've been doing sites, honestly, man, like I started doing sites when I was uh, like 12. Wow. Yeah. So like I've been doing, doing sites for a long time. Uh, I worked in advertising for four years before starting MTL blog. Uh, so for me, it's like, I, I, I understand the traffic game. I understand the content game. I understand the social media game and we when we launched a brand we were certain that it would work and we constantly constantly optimize like every day we make sure that everything that we do is that we're able to um, analyze and then optimize so it's not because we're the biggest in montreal with the 18 to 34 segment that that we should just sit on our asses and like true and like you know if i can get the glory and like uh, just be like okay we are the biggest and like let's not let's stop trying to prove ourselves i think that it's still important to try to prove yourself even though you're uh somewhat at the top yeah you have to evolve constantly right yep the company started with mtl blogs what was to the early beginnings and some of the most challenging aspects you had to face you and your partners Oof, uh, there is many okay. uh, honestly i mean this is my first business also uh, so I've never had really experience with running a business. So I think it was like not just the launching of the brand and the platform and the site, but also the launching of a business. Uh, so I think I've learned a lot, I think, in both aspects. The hardest challenges, uh, probably say maintaining cash flow. Okay. Uh, it was definitely, definitely hard. Uh, certainly as a media company, I'm not sure. Like, I mean, you're starting to dabble a bit into it. But as a media company, you rely on ads uh, to survive and grow and prosper. However, we're living in a very fucked up world in the sense that right now ads, uh, like uh, the vice CEO, uh, Shane Smith, uh, coined it as uh, 2017 will be a bloodbath for uh, the media world. Uh, and he's totally right. I think that's exactly what's happening. Yeah. So I think it's like ad blockers, uh, people who aren't uh, trusting uh, ads as much, uh, uh, huge brands uh, pulling out their ads from YouTube uh, because of the type of content that, uh, that, is, that they can't necessarily filter before they associate their ads to the content. So it's like, I think, and Facebook and Google owns over 75% of all digital ad spend. Uh, that is just crazy. Uh, so I think, I think it's like as a media company that, that, that wants to grow, uh, you can't just do stuff good. Like you need to do them fucking great. Yeah. Uh, and I think that for us, we didn't necessarily were ready for, for that step. Uh, so obviously we were growing, but like there was always setbacks. Uh, there was always like not understanding, uh, to be able to forecast sales. So like always hiring, firing, depending on, you know, depending on the cash flow, depending on like our objectives. So that was like a really rough uh, understanding of the business world and the culture. Like you always imagine like startups, oh, okay, it's like you're gonna launch a startup and it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be super cool. You're gonna get funding. Uh, you're gonna grow your team. You're gonna be able to have beers. It's the total opposite. Total opposite, honestly. It's like, yes, you have the beers. Yes, you have, friends yes you create a community but at the end like it's super like tough. at some point like you have to tell them like even like okay you guys you're gonna have to step it up and like how do you how do you go from like this sort of friendship to like okay you got to step up you know your your work ethic or you got to step up like your performance and your objectives so that was tough understanding the media world uh like not from a from a not from a traffic standpoint, not from a growth standpoint, because I understood that, but more from the impact that we had on other entities here. So for example, MTL blog, I mean, we grew from like 250,000 uh, uniques per month uh, in like 2000, end of 2013 to about 1.2 million. How did you guys do that? Uh, lists, man. Honestly, like uh, just like we, we always wanted to create content that people engage with. 
Uh, and every single article that we created, we created it with the thinking behind it that we wanted people to share it. Mm -hmm. So not just read the article and acknowledge it. No, we wanted them to love the article so much that they would share it with their friends. Uh, so that was always our focus. So for us, it's like when that's your focus, it really gets you to think like you won't create pieces of content that you know won't get a lot of shares. Makes you think outside the box. Yeah, exactly. But it also makes you think performance first. True. And it's not just the creative, it's not just the cultural aspect. Like, yes, it is. And that's super important. But like, I think it's also the performance standpoint that you need to think about. And it's like, some people didn't like that also. They, you know, they thought that we spammed everyone's news feeds with clickbait titles. But like, no, it's honestly, it's we we knew what type of titles people would click on. And 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 we wanted people to click on the articles and share them. Uh, and at the end of the day, if people hated it, we wouldn't be one of the biggest sites in Montreal. Right. That's true. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's just honestly, it's just creating content with performance in mind. Uh, and I think media companies are starting to understand that. Mm, I mean, good. people do it super well in the States. BuzzFeed, uh, Vice here that comes from a, a Montreal company. They're massive now. Uh, I mean, having the post, like complex, su super cool site. So I think it's like people are starting to understand that. And the people that understands them are the people who, who grows. True. Uh, but the, the people who doesn't understand that and still wants to have you know like their cultural thing and they're gonna do reviews about like about like band shows and like it, like that's that's great man but like no one will care about your experience people want to be excited about stuff uh, and they want to to imagine themselves going there so that's what you need to you know to think about so narcity was really uh all about that so we wanted to take that what we accomplished here in Montreal, but then take that across the world. Awesome. Every successful business gets a defining moment where there's a tremendous growth. What was that moment for you guys? Um, I'd say that was uh, 2016. What happened in 2016? La last year. So many things. Uh, so okay. Narcity, for example, Narcity, we were in Montreal and Toronto. And then in 2016, we expanded to the 12 cities across the country. Wow. Uh, so we expanded all one shot in, in one year. Yeah, in one year. Um, that was really crazy. Uh, so that was a really uh, in, intense year. So for us, I think that was really the year that like we understood all the background of the learning. And like for me also as you know, as a business owner, like I've understood so many things of like running a business and like coaching staff and hiring people and like disconnecting also myself from a lot of the work because uh, you know as a business owner when you're a startup you do most of the work yourself right but i think when you grow and when you need to scale you, you need delegate. to disconnect and delegate so i think it's trusting your employees trusting your team to make sure that you know that you know that they'll be able to do the right job right uh so i think 2016 was really when we've solidified all the pillars of the company uh, we've launched across the country. Uh, we also tried, uh, I mean, we launched in the States, in Boston. Okay. Uh, it's not that great of a, of a <laughs> like, it wasn't like uh, celebrations and like everything. I think it was like, we learned a lot from it. Uh, so we stopped doing content in Boston for now. Uh, we put it on pause uh, until we reevaluate how we're going to attack the, you know, the American market. And I think it's very, very different from uh, Canada. In what sense? uh i mean just from our initial analysis like americans uh which i feel i i feel the problem is us in the sense that we tried to create we tried to be americans uh and it didn't work out i mm -hmm. feel like we need to be canadians in america you get what you're saying you know what i mean yeah like, yeah so because i think i think americans consider canadians cool right? you think so i think so oh yeah Justin Trudeau, like uh, <laughs> legalized weed uh, next year, Bieber, The Weeknd, Drake, Drake. You know, I like I I tr like the Great North, like our like amazing like uh, scenic uh, environment, like it's just insane here, right? And I think Americans love that. 
uh, and I think Americans find that cool. Maybe like not with Trump and like, anyways, I'm not going to get into any uh, political uh, st stances here, but uh, no, I, I, I truly think I truly think that having a Canadian voice in the States is going to have an impact. So we will start playing more around uh, that in the future. So we're looking to maybe expand a little bit more aggressively in the States next year. Uh, but for now, we're, we have a lot of work to do in Canada. If you had one advice to give to an aspiring entrepreneur who wants to get started in the media industry, media company, uh, what, what would be your advice? In the media industry, wow. Uh, figure your shit out <laughs> before you launch. And certainly if you're going to launch like in the next few years, really do a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, research. Solidify your brand make your brand almost be able to speak for itself. Like when you look at your brand, like you should be able to understand what that brand is for. What's that brand's mission, right? Uh, so I think work a lot on the brand, get a kick-ass team that really uh, is with you on that same uh, mission, uh, create content that is engaging, create content that people like. Yeah. Not to cut you off, but how do you find that team though? Uh, it's a lot of like-minded people. I think it's, uh, it's really, I think you gotta, you, you gotta hire for the fit first more, even more than the experience. Like I, I would love to hire, uh, you know, to hire people just based off of their fit and, and just because it's like you, you can mold them into what you want them to become. And like ev anyone can learn. And certainly in the media, like industry where everything advances so fast. It's like, honestly, if, if the person isn't the right fit, then you will have issues in the sense like you're constantly going to be going against uh, this person in the sense of like you will always push them to learn more. But like if the person doesn't understand the, you know, the company mission or isn't necessarily super uh, connected with you uh, as the owner, then he will never follow and he will just disconnect after a while because we are moving fast. And you need to be moving with us and you need to be exactly on the same uh, mindset as us uh, so i think i think once you find people that have the same sort of fit as you obviously if you're starting a business uh that is willing to take a pay cut also uh but i think if if you're willing to motivate them and convince them about your vision i i think you can get the people on board for sure what's next for nice city media in the next few years North City Media, uh, so obviously we're, Austin. Yeah, we're across ca Canada. Uh, I want to launch in the States. Uh, we're developing uh, our own platforms uh, for content uh, management. So we're, we will be working a lot on that. Uh, obviously for us, what's also important is to be able to sort of, like North City's vision is to become uh, one of the leading uh, brands for travel and tourism across the world. Uh, so I don't want to just be online. I want to bring that offline also. Okay. Uh, so we're, we're working on a bunch of cool stuff. Uh, I can't really get into it. Come on. Uh, I mean, for, for like example, like we want to look into maybe opening up like uh, pop-up shops across uh, the cities. Nice. Um, yeah. And it's like we promote businesses every day, like across the entire country, right? Like we create lineups in front of a ice cream shop. Why can't we potentially have our own pop-up shop sure. that are branded with like our experience? Like, also even take the business owners and bring them inside the pop-up shop. Because you like, know the recipe, right? Not just the recipe, but like we know the people who make those cool things, right? Mm -hmm. So like we'd like to invite them and like, hey, come be part of our experience, and 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 we will bring all the people there, uh, and we're gonna have an amazing fucking like experience that we're giving our users. And you're going to be able to present and even make money off of your products anyways. So I'd love to do that and experiment with that. Uh, so I'm not too sure how that's going to go yet. So I don't, uh, don't expect that to happen uh, right away. But uh, for me, it's re really trying to uh, take what we're doing so well online and trying to bring it further. Uh, we're also going to start dabbling into video. Okay. Uh, we still need to, fi you know, to figure out our uh, direction on that end. We're going to launch uh, an app probably end of this year. Wow. Yeah. So uh, lots of stuff. Chuck, thanks for having us. Chris, thanks, man. Cut. <laughs>